Hello, thank you for joining me for another Dear Sam Horse Help Horsemanship series. And this week, what I thought I'd talk about is how do we break down the big, chaotic, unwanted motion in the horse? So we often allow ourselves to get distracted by unwanted moments of uh, where our horses may be distracted, fearful, defensive, spooking, overreactive, hyperreactive, uh, defensive, you know, all of these really, really big dramatic behaviors. And often what happens is people tend to be hopeful, waiting to see what the horse is going to do, seeing the signs and the initial indications as to the horse having a building tension and defensiveness and tightness in his body. And then the human goes very, very passive, hoping that maybe the moment will pass and then all of a sudden the horse explodes or does something dramatic, scares the human, and then the human goes even more passive in order to not create conflict or issues. Um, and then basically the horse and the human come away from the scenario where they're distrustful of each other, they're wary of interaction with each other, and in the human we become anticipative as to what the next event is going to be when the next time something unwanted is going to occur. So what I want you to start to think about is how often do you go passive? How often do you become hopeful in your thoughts? Like here's something that's potentially scary. So let me go really soft and quiet my behavior. Maybe it won't bother the horse. We can get past it. And then I'll sort out whatever it was that I was going to do with him over wherever it is that you're heading to. And unfortunately, this puts the horse in the driver's seat as far as making the decisions, as far as how he handles something. And it teaches the horse that he's not going to get support from you. And so, you know, it's usually not until the really big dramatic moment that the human finally goes, okay, that's too much. I have to do something. And they have this expectation that the horse will suddenly consider what it is that they're offering. Well, if all of in these past and previous experiences where the horse was bothered or worried or fearful or defensive and the human didn't show up, why in his peak stress would he ever consider or address whatever it is the horse, the human is trying to ask of the horse? And it just doesn't happen. And then people get scared and people often get hurt and things fall apart. And finally people go, okay, I think something's not working. So rather than having to go down that route, what I like to teach people is, are you paying attention ahead of time to the indications that your horse is about to do something and how often do you actually address it when it's still just a thought or when maybe his body is just sort of leaning in the direction you didn't really want him to go and then at that moment you go, okay, wait a minute, I need to redirect his thought, I need to get a change in his physical uh, posture, maybe a release of tension or tightness or a brace or a defensiveness? Or do you go, well, maybe he'll only take a few steps in the direction I don't want and then I can fix it. Or maybe he'll stop himself on his own and then I won't have to fix it. Uh, and the big important factor of this is not about the unwanted behavior. It's not even about the scary moments. It's learning to recognize how often the human is hopeful and passive in the interaction with the horse. And I'm not sure why this is something that is not addressed on a bigger scale. Um, you know, but the horse is a herd animal. And so he's used to getting feedback from the herd. He's used to getting a continuous interaction from the herd. And with people, we kind of want to offer information to the horse and then we tend to go pretty darn quiet. And then we offer information and then we go pretty darn quiet. And so that creates a disconnect in our communication. And again, it teaches the horse that he's on his own for whatever scenario. And so basically we're setting it up that the horse is going to offer unwanted behavior. We are waiting to see him offer that unwanted behavior. And then we're trying to get critical or feel like we have some sense of control during the peak of his stress and dramatic movements in that unwanted behavior. And we've set it up to fail. And this is what happens over and over. And this is why I have such a hard time when people are like, in the moment of the spook, do this. Or, you know, after the horse bolts, do this. And, you know, yes, we need to have tools and skills, but why not diffuse any sort of potential fleeing, resistance, defensiveness, concern, fear, 
before it escalates. And yet so much of our society is continuously trying to band-aid an unwanted scenario that totally could have been prevented. So the next time you head out to your horse, I want you to slow down and I want you to start to think about like, how often do you actually look at the direction of where his feet are when he's at a halt? Does it look like all four feet are balanced and straight underneath him or does it look like he's in four different directions? How often does your horse at the halt stand but have his chest leaning way forward or his neck way far down towards the ground? Or does he stand with his feet not moving but have his head cranked way around towards, you know, looking at the pasture horses or the distraction or whatever's going on in the woods or in the other arena or wherever you might be? How often does it feel like you only kind of wanted a couple steps and your horse gave you 10? Uh, how often does it feel like you have to ask your horse to halt like three or four times before he actually listens? And again, this isn't about controlling his movement. What I'm talking about is you learning to recognize how many times the horse is potentially giving you feedback to tell you that he's not addressing you, that he's not believing your communication or that your communication is unclear. And that often when the human gets that, we just ignore it and we go on to something else. So it was like I was telling someone the other day where, you know, if I'm asking a horse to step up and line up to the mounting block, I don't want it on autopilot where the horse is trained to line up to the block. I want it to feel like the horse can look, think, step, one step at a time, not feel like I have to have short reins to keep him there and contain him, not feel like I'm on a time limit to where I have to hurry up and get on him, not feel like I'm ever wondering what's going to happen when I get on his back if there's any you know tension or defensiveness. I need to address that before I ever think about getting on. And if it does feel like I have to contain the horse and hold the horse in place and hurry up and get on, then I probably shouldn't be getting on because I've missed something. And yet so much of the time, because our agenda is we'll fix it at the right, you know, during the ride, we'll, we'll fix it later. It's not that bad right now. And we don't connect that that flea and that defensiveness and that tightness that's starting from when we first go to get on, that the horse is giving us all the indications that he's having a problem and we are being hopeful and we are ignoring it and we are focused on our task rather than quality. And then the horse comes up with all of this unwanted behavior and we go, well, where did that come from? Well, why did he do that? Why does he always do X, Y, and Z? Or he used to not be that bad, but now it feels like it's escalating. Well, if things have never been addressed, if things have never been diffused in helping the horse, what other choice does he have? So the next few times you head out to your horse, I want you to take a little bit of time and start to notice, you know, what does his posture look like? What does his body look like? What does his breathing look like? Do you break down different body parts or do you just see the whole horse at once? And you'll often be surprised at how much you can see when you slow your own mind down and start to become available to read the horse's behavior and communication. They will always tell you what's coming ahead of time. It's a matter of if you're listening. So thank you for joining me and I will see you next week. Remember new videos are uploaded every Friday.